Hello, I'm Shen, and you're watching XDA TV. Yes, I'm in a Pikachu costume, and I know I haven't had a video in a while, but that's because I've been busy with uni and all that stuff. Before we jump into today's episode, I would like to thank HTC for sending me a Sensation XE. It's a very solid and sexy phone, but it's a little heavy. I also got my Galaxy Nexus. There have been many criticisms about its camera, but it's actually really good. If you want to check the discussions, check the links below. Anyway, this week I'll be showing you the different keyboard replacements for your Android phone. As usual, I'll be starting off with the stock keyboards. Ice Cream Sandwich, Signage Mod and most stock builds have very similar keyboards. They're based off the AOSP Gingerbread keyboard and they're very fast and very reliable. They have multi-touch dictionary support, but switching languages isn't very easy. You'd actually have to switch the global language for the phone. HTC phones running Sense UI such as the Sensation XE, they have the HTC IME keyboard. It's personally my favourite keyboard since it was my first keyboard and I've gotten really used to it over time. It's fast, it supports multiple languages, but you can only use it on Sensu iPhones. If you want HTC IME on a different phone, you'd have to go on XDA and look for HTC IME mod. If you use Pinyin or Korean, try the Google Pinyin IME and Korean IME on the market. They're free and based on the AOSP keyboards. SwiftKey is one of the most popular keyboard replacements on the market. It doesn't support multi-touch, supports multiple languages, and has a very nice UI. You can get the free custom skins on the market, but you have to spend £2.49 on the keyboard itself. I did used to use it, but then I switched because I didn't like how it put a space after every prediction I chose. Also, it doesn't support Chinese, which I tend to use sometimes. It's got a cool feature, which learns how you type from your emails, SMS, Facebook and Twitter. My favourite alternative to the HTC Sense keyboard is Smart Keyboard. It's fast, it's stable and it has very similar behaviours to the HTC Sense keyboard. It costs £1.79 on the market but you can try the free version. You can also download skins and additional language packs off the market as well. Next up is TouchPal. It's quite similar to the other keyboards with you know multiple touch, multi languages but it also adds slide type. Slide type is quite like swipe, which I'll talk a bit more about later on. It's very stable and completely free on the market. Go Keyboard from the Go development team is a very popular keyboard. It supports multiple languages, you can download additional skins of the market, and it supports multi-touch and slide type as well. It's free on the market, and I'm not sure if it tracks your IMEI or not. For those of you who use a lot of symbols and want a wide variety of symbols to pick from, try Hacker's Keyboard. It's based on the AOSP Gingerbread Keyboard, but it has 5 4 rows QWERTY, multi-touch, and a lot of symbols to choose from. It's free on the market and it supports multiple languages. Thumb Keyboard, £1.49 on the market, has a very nice concept. It basically splits the keyboard in half down the middle, so you have one half for each thumb. But apart from that, it's pretty much the same as the other keyboards. So Swipe. It's one of the most used keyboards on Android, and it's very efficient for fast typing. Well, you don't really type, you just sort of swipe. It comes pre-installed on Samsung devices, but you can download it free from their website. I'll post a link to it down below. There really isn't much to say or go into detail about the keyboards. They all have pretty similar features and they function really well. So it's basically a matter of choosing the one that suits you best. One good tip for those who have laggy keyboards is to turn off haptic feedback. It makes a huge improvement in performance and response time. Oh, and there's a very weird keyboard out there called 8pen. I personally find it a dumb idea, but apparently, if you can overcome the steep learning curve, it's a very efficient keyboard. You don't really type, you swipe as well. However, it's really weird and I don't think I'm demonstrating it very well. I'll post the link down below so you can check out a demo. It does cost 99p on the market though. So that's my list of keyboard recommendations on Android. Go try them out and see which one you prefer. And now on for some Android news. An AOSP ICS build for the Nexus S is out. Ice Cream Sandwich for the Samsung Galaxy S2 is nearing completion. Google Music has finally come out of beta, except to use the store you have to be in the US. For now. As some of you may know, I am part of the Villarom development team. We've recently released a new site called Free Your Android. It's basically packed with a lot of Android related guides, from the basic ones such as the secret Android dialing codes, to the advanced guides such as deodexing are wrong. We're constantly adding content and we will be adding a submission option soon, so go check it out. So that's it for this episode of XDA TV. I will post links to everything I talked about in the description below. You can follow me on Twitter or Google+. I hope this episode has been very useful. And I'll see you next time.